I'm Matt Bichard here in Dallas for NARIT's REIT World 2017. Joining me today is Ryan Burke, an analyst with Green Street Advisors. Ryan, thanks so much for joining us. Thank you. Now, I'd like to start by talking about uh, the self-storage sector, and can you give us a sense of what Green Street's higher level view of the sector is? Green Street has long held a favorable view of the self-storage business, and that view really emanates from an understanding of the sector's truly unique underlying property level characteristics, first and foremost, low capital expenditures. If you own a self-storage property, on average, you're going to put fewer dollars back into that property to keep it competitive over time. It's a huge advantage for owners of these facilities, and it's something that is often not fully appreciated in underwriting in the private market. The South Storage sector also has a strong and steady NOI growth profile. From a, from a cyclical perspective, there are demand drivers that are inherent to both up cycles and down cycles. So it's a business that does very well in both good times and bad. And very importantly, and often not fully understood, is that we've seen a secular shift in the utilization of self-storage by the U.S. consumer over time. So you take these two very positive attributes, and certainly there are some others, and you look at where self-storage properties have been valued in the private market over time. And it's been very clear to us that there's been a systemic mispricing or a systemic underpricing of self-storage properties. Cap rates too high relative to other property types, values too low. And so this has allowed investors, particularly those that were early to the game, to achieve very sizable risk-adjusted returns. It's also part of the reason why cap rates for self-storage properties have compressed over the past few years. Now, Green Street covers the four largest public self-storage REITs. Can you give us a sense as to what your overall view of, of those companies are? As much as we've held a favorable view of, at the property level, we've also over time held a relatively favorable view of the REITs as a whole. Now, of course, we have views that differ by REIT, and those views have changed over time, but probably the, the one of the biggest higher level considerations for public market investors is simply the competitive advantages that the REITs have relative to their private peers. There's nowhere else in the real estate space that we see such a large gap in operating ability between the large operators, which includes the REITs and less than a handful full of probably private owners of large portfolios and the vast majority of, of their peers. And a lot of that advantage surprisingly comes from technological advantages. First and foremost, internet marketing. So the average self-storage consumer today is going to go on Google and search for a self-storage property. And so for owners of self-storage to be able to understand the Google algorithms and be able to use those algorithms to their own advantage and also to pay for the things they need to do to show up on the top of the page has become increasingly important. And all else equal, the REITs have that capability, the private owners do not. On top of that, there's revenue management, which is not only how you price the units specifically, but also how you handle the trade-off between pushing rents and potentially the customer moving out for the time that they're in the space. Again, the REITs have these technological capabilities. They have teams dedicated to trying to predict the behavior of the consumer, the private operators do not. And so it's created an environment where not only are the REITs, and again, a handful of the few of the private guys, better at attracting the customer through internet marketing, they're also better at maximizing the value of that customer for the, for the length of stay. It's been a big drive of value creation for the REITs, particularly when they're buying properties from these smaller owners. And it's certainly a large contributor to why the self-storage REITs over the past six years on average have traded some pretty nice premiums to their own net asset value. Now we've seen operating fundamentals in the self-storage sector come under some pressure lately. What's playing out there? You first have to consider the fact that things in self-storage have simply been so good for so long. NOI growth for the self-storage REITs has been nearly double that of REITs in most other real estate sectors for the past six years. So the law of gravity applies here. NOI growth had to slow for the self-storage REITs at a certain point in time. More specifically though, why is it slowing? Well, self-storage is a business that thrives off the mobility of people and the movement of the stuff that they own. We're eight years into an economic recovery that in and of itself leaves us in relatively uncharted waters in terms of the length of the up cycle. And so what we're seeing is that some of these, the strength of some of these drivers of this up cycle specific demand has started to dissipate. Take for example, job growth, unemployment, the unemployment rate is low, but it also means by definition that we're creating fewer jobs. Household formation has slowed, and, and a greater share of the households that are being formed are owner households instead of renter households. And so usually, 
owner households have more storage space within the properties themselves. And so these factors, in, in addition to some others, have created an environment where, according to the census, mobility or the movement of people across residences and, and borders is actually at a cyclical low in the U.S. So people are feeling relatively well settled this deep into the recovery. At the same time, rents per square foot and self-storage are all-time highs. They're 30% above the prior peak that was reached in 2008. There's never been a price per foot, square foot ceiling found in the self-storage space, but by definition, we're closer to it than we ever have been. And on top of all this, you're starting to get the impact of new development, particularly in per certain core markets. That comes after a relative dearth or essentially no new development from 2009 to 2012. So with all that being said, what's your longer-term outlook for the self-storage? sector. Despite the near-term pressures, we continue to think that long-term outlook is pretty good, although we're very much of the mindset that what has been a very easy and supportive operating environment for self-storage owners in the past is not going to be as easy or supportive moving forward, and that view is supported, supported by a few observable trends. By far, probably the most important but also probably the most overlooked driver of self-storage demand over the past few decades has been this dramatic shift in utilization, increase in utilization. And we at Green Street define utilization simply as the percentage of the U.S. population that utilizes self-storage in any given year. Now that utilization rate has increased from 2% decades ago to 8% today. So it's been a huge but also sort of under the radar driver of the business. Now, where that utilization rate moves from here is impossible to predict. There's, there's some factors that without a doubt are gonna work against it. For example, the working age population in the US is gonna grow at a slower rate moving forward. That age cohort has been the primary user of self-storage facilities over time. At the same time, consumption trends are changing. People are spending more on services. They're spending less on storable goods. And we at Green Street have defined storable goods as a, as a subset of goods within the personal consumption index, um, which people tend to buy and store over time. And those trends are, are, are there's a very clear shift away from the purchase of those goods. At the same time, technology is changing things. It's both reducing the size of certain goods and replacing other goods altogether. My, my iPhone's the best example, right? Not only is it my cell phone, it's my home phone, it's my answering machine, it's my filing cabinet, it is my alarm clock, it is my CD collection, among many other things. So moving forward, we're probably in a situation where not only are you getting slower growth in that primary user of self-storage, that working age population, but it's very possible that these people are going to own less in the way of goods that they want to store. Now, that's the pessimistic side. There's also room for optimism, and that is that some of these trends have already been in place, and they should have already had a negative impact. But over the time period that these trends have come into place, self-storage NOI growth has been nothing short of impressive. So it does give us some reason for optimism. It just suggests to us that the utilization rate can probably increase further. Is it going to quadruple again? Probably not. Is it going to double? Probably not. But can it increase from this 8% level to 9 to 10 to 11%? It very well could. And so. That leads us to believe that, you know, while we do think that self-storage has probably seen its best days from an operating perspective, there probably still are some good days that lie ahead. Ryan, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. For more information about Nareed's REIT world, be sure to visit Nareed's website, REIT.com.